Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Effie. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Humira injections and my experience, so stay tuned because that's coming all right up. So we are finally in the last week of December. Thank you guys so much for everyone who has subscribed, watched, liked my video, shared them, and I hope we can continue to grow this Spoonie fam. I'll be switching up medications. So if you are also doing the same thing in 2022, or if you have done so this year, give this video a thumbs up. And I know you can also give this a thumbs down technically because who wants to switch medications, honestly? Sometimes you go through the motions all over again, and I know I do at least, when you are diagnosed and you're put on a medication and you're just kind of like worried and anxious about it and Humira is something I actually was on in 2012. I was on it for about maybe uh, several months and then I had to stop it. So at the time that I was on it, about 10 years ago, it had citrate and that is a preservative that was found in the old Humira injections. Here in the United States, they ended up removing the citrate, thank God, because it made the injection sting really bad. And I've been on Embril before and I was on that for years. And I remember that feeling like multiple bee stings, but for Humira, it was a different type of sting and I did not like it. And I noticed that I had bruising and just like other injections like reactions with both biologics. So I'm glad that this injection now does not have a citrate. So yay to that. I actually forgot how to use this type of injection because I've been on methotrexate, which you don't need to keep in the fridge and with you know different injections there's different instructions so i have this in my fridge sitting here for like the past few months because i haven't started it yet it's been in the works um in the plan and so i'm going to show you guys exactly how it's packaged and i want to know how many of you are on humira if there's any tips and advice that you guys have or what your experiences are They provided two syringes in this box because as many of you know who have tried Humira or on it or know someone who is, it's an injection that you give two times a month. Then they have all this other information in the box, which I didn't realize. Oops, and it was in the fridge. But instructions here again, medication guide. And I believe this is a bunch of other information along with the side effect list. And then they package the Humira injections in these individual little boxes. Only downside is keeping it in the fridge. That's what I like about methotrexate, if I'm being honest, is that you don't need to keep it in a fridge. So when you travel, it's so easy. Seems to be so many people on Humira. I don't know why that is, but... I know that it treats other conditions, not just rheumatoid arthritis. And so that's a good thing. It seems like it's helping people. So I know when I was on it, it did help. I noticed that it brought down the inflammation in my knee that I was having immediately because at one point Embril stopped working and that's why I had to make the switch to Humira, which is a common thing with so many people. Again, comment below if that's ever happened to you or what stages of medication you've been on. Like what's your journey been like? I know for me, I started on Embril and then I moved to Humira. I've been on ibuprofen, prednisone, like in the middle of all those two. And then Plaquenil I try for two weeks and then it's just been kind of like this journey since but in any case Methotrexate's working, but I do need to add in a little extra something and uh, Luckily my rheumatologist has worked with me to kind of make a plan that's more uh, precision medicine and that's what I love about a lot of uh, doctors now that they're focusing on the individual patient and recently I attended the American College of Rheumatology conference in October and precision medicine was a, a hot topic and that's basically just looking at what the patient needs um, without getting too technical and formulating a plan to what their um, you know, symptoms and uh, history is like, you know. So for me, um, I will not be doing it two times a month. I will be starting off once a month and then uh, eventually kind of switch things up with, uh, you know, other things that I'm taking and then, you know, go from there. So it's like a stepping stone, you know. I can't really just jump and do whatever um, right away because as we know, if you want to lower one medication, you have to kind of go step by step. 
But yeah, when I was on uh, Humira back in the day, um, I ended up having to stop it because I got rashes all over my legs. And at first I thought it was a rash associated with Humira because um, from what I know and read back then, there is a rash that can occur um, when you're on this medication, but it was not the rash that was what I read or what my doctor explained. So I had to go in and at that time I wasn't feeling well at all. This was uh, right before um, I had one of the worst flares of my life that lasted um, about a week, but the recovery after that week was like a six month recovery. I got so weak, I lost weight, muscle, uh, you know, um, loss, and all those fun things, right, that we experience with flares. But I had a lot of setbacks during that time after that flare, and it's not from the Humira at all. Um, those rashes were actually um, something that I had um, going on with my body before I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So I've talked about this in other videos with the root causes and kind of like my quote unquote triggers for RA. I uh, had like really bad acne, eczema, and these rashes that were um, eventually found out at Mayo Clinic to be Petiteriasis rosea. I'm always butchering this name, butchering a lot of names, but whatever. My rheumatologist at the time was like, oh, you have a viral infection. We talked about this in another video, but my point is when I got on Humira, these rashes appeared all over my legs again. At that time, when I saw the rheumatologist, I told him about what happened at Mayo Clinic, which was in my notes. Um, and then, yeah, he said, just stop the medicine. And I stopped it. The rashes eventually went away but not after some time. So that just showed that it was viral in nature. This was more like internal. That's why I ended up stopping um, the Humira because at that time there were so many root causes that were out of control, like a wildfire. And I was seeing functional and integrative doctors at the time, but it wasn't um, precision medicine. Like they weren't giving me like things that could really help with this. Um, it was just like general stuff and like some, um, you know, specific things with gut health. But regardless, um, that's why I ended up stopping it and going on like a different journey for a while. And now after I've kind of like addressed a lot of these root causes over the years and things have gotten better. And those of you who can relate to kind of like what my um, root causes are, you know that like stuff like this is very stubborn and can reactivate. I'm just so grateful right now. I've gotten to this point and I'm headed into the new year with a plan I feel confident about, but I just know that there's so many people out there on Humira and any words of advice, encouragement, and wisdom from you guys, even though I've been living with rheumatoid arthritis for 17 years, that doesn't mean I know everything. And someone who's been diagnosed and living with it for two years may know stuff I don't know. We can all learn from each other. And if you're starting Humira too, we're Humira buddies, or if you've been on it, I'll join your group that you got going on and you guys all talk about it. I don't know if I'll ever come on and do a live injection with Humira, I know some people do. I just don't really like doing injection videos. I like watching them, like I've said in one other injection video I did try doing with methotrexate. It was just so awkward. I'm so awkward with that and no. all. Yeah, I just wanted to come on here and just give a quick little update. Also a heads up of what you guys can expect on this channel. So there's been so many new people, new faces on here. And I love connecting with you guys in the comments and I appreciate everyone who's watched my videos. I hope that I am helping you guys with this information. I'll obviously contact your medical professionals and focus on what you need to do for you. But this is just a channel that's here for um, creating a sense of a community and support and uplifting each other, laughing and kind of digging into what can be done better for us here in the arthritis community. So you guys will see like a lot of new content coming up in, in the new year and I hope you guys stay tuned for it all. And before we go, I wanted to pull an affirmation card because it's the last week of December. Oops, one fell to the ground, hold on. Oh my God. Okay, it disappeared. I have no idea where it went. And so I got this new doc from Louise Hay. She has this really good book here that I haven't read either. Where is it? Oh my God. Uh, hold up. You can heal your life. So we're going into 2022 with some good thoughts. I'm going to pull one of her affirmation cards and see what we get as a collective here. I balance my masculine and feminine sides. Okay, so here's the card. The masculine and feminine parts of me are in perfect balance and harmony. I'm at peace and all is well. I like that. 
we're going into 2022 feeling peaceful and thinking that all is well. And today I don't have a Spoonie Star shout out to give because I wanted to give you guys all a shout out and stay tuned for more. Happy New Year and stay safe out there. Bye. Thank you.